Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there Hunters, and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Today we're going to take another look at the modding scene on the PC version of Iceborne, uh, at least until Savage Eva hits. We've had a lot of new tools and utilities added, so there's a lot of cool new stuff available. Now I want to preface this by saying that basically every mod requires Stracker's mod loader to run, so thanks Stracker for his hard work on that one. And this does break basically every single patch that Capcom does for the PC version, but he usually updates it within a day, so just keep on that. And in the event that your patch is no longer working, all you would have to do is rename your native PC folder to anything else, and then just name it back to native PC once you have your updated trackers. You don't have to delete anything, you can just put it aside. So trackers works by just dragging and dropping these files into your Monster Hunter World root directory, not the native PC folder like all the other mods. Also make sure you have the latest Visual C++ distributable downloaded, which is linked in the mod description. Otherwise, you'll just have a blank screen or a crash on boot. So the other thing I want to point out is that none of these showcase mods will be any cosmetic weapons or armors because there's like a fucking thousand of these at this point and they all have their own audiences. Just by all means, go patrol the Nexus or check out Kanta's videos and other people do some mod showcases as well and they show out a lot of visual stuff. Okay, anyway, so let's get into this. First up is a popular quality of life mod from base game, more wedge beetles. The author, Dave Err, has ported this over to Iceborne, and as you can imagine, it adds more wedge beetles to areas that make it easier to jump around. Warfrost Reach and Guided Lance are not complete yet, sadly, but Dave has said that he will be finishing that up later. Now, you can use this online, even if the other players don't have this installed, they just kind of see you teleport from one ledge to another. Kind of goofy, but it still works. This is a great thing just to get around and get up to things rather than having to climb vines or, you know... Places where you would really think there would be more wedge beetles, they add them. Now, unfortunately, a lot of them are just kind of floating there in the air, so I guess people who don't like to see things like that, they probably wouldn't want this mod installed. Unfortunately, you can't add them attached to like tree trunks or anything until we get some better map editing tools in, so that's going to be further down the line. But for now, you know, more wedge beetles. Okay, Clutch Claw. There are quite a few mods for this one, and of course, many of these mods would be unsavory to some players but you do you man so the first would be asterisks one attack tenderize mod which as you can imagine lets light weapons tenderize in one attack simple enough it definitely makes playing light weapons a lot easier now of course asterisk doesn't like baguettes so this does not work with insect glaives however there is a mod to do that as well so don't worry there's also a mod by me tool that increases the tenderize duration from 90 seconds to 120 seconds Again, probably won't jive with some players, but man, if you're playing by yourself and you just hate tenderize, go ahead. There's other options if you want, but you know, this is a thing, so if you want to use it, go for it. Now, Strackers also came up with a claw mod that takes a different spin on things. He made a clutch claw rework that changes basically everything. So by default, everything is disabled. Now you cannot tenderize monsters. By doing your claw attacks or the weapon attacks, you will not build up any of that tenderized values and you can no longer wall bang them. Nothing. Now, you can only do these things when a monster claggers. Before you get your panties in a knot though, there is an upside. Doing a tenderized attack this way now permanently tenderizes a zone, which is pretty great. Now, if you do it again to another zone, it will remove the previously tenderized spot and put it on the new one. So you can only have one spot tenderized at a time, but you also only have to actually tenderize a monster once, which is amazing even for light weapons. This changes the dynamics of the fight a whole lot actually, because you can no longer start by repositioning a monster with claws or wall bangs or you know anything like that. You can't get free and rage at the start, you can't start the fight with the spot tenderized. It's a whole different ballgame at this point, and I think this is a very unique approach to the claw situation in Iceborne. And I actually don't dislike this. I understand it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I gotta say, this is actually a pretty solid idea. I would not mind to see this mass implemented somewhere later down the line and maybe the community patch or something else because everyone hates claw and this is a lot less claw usage, but it straight up changes the game entirely. Okay, more Strackers mods because he's on a roll. Finally, no more bloated values. If you played older games and you know exactly what this is, basically every weapon now displays their true raw values on the weapons rather than the bloated values. Just 
Yeah, it's so good. I don't understand why they keep jumping from raw to bloat values between games. I know they have different teams make the games, but it's just so annoying. I wish we can get some standardization. So yeah, no more bloat values. Everyone's got the exact true raw. Makes things nice and clean. Now Crimson on the modding Discord made a nice dropped items effects mod. It looks gorgeous, like Las Vegas lights. Views made a higher resolution version, which looks really nice too. It's a little bit easier on the eyes compared to the light pillars, and I just absolutely love this thing. And now there are other options to have, you know, only one image instead of the pulsating stack of three like I do, and a few others as well to suit your needs, so don't feel like you have to be locked to having this LED eye cancer like mine. So anyway, check this one out because it's actually a great way to keep track of items that actually looks like it belongs in the game. Another small quality of life option, no more notifications made by Delirium. It's exactly what you would imagine it would be, you have the option to remove system messages, skill notifications, and sounds of the pings as well. It makes playing the game 10 times better when you're running things like peak performance or spare shot or anything else. So they aren't just constantly coming up and pinging and popping and doing all that shit. This mod is another thing that we should have had in the first place to turn off and on in the end game menus, but you know, I guess that's why we have PC mods. Anyway, I tried to show you more about this mod, but there's not really a whole lot to show because it takes away stuff to show just just trust me it works especially for true shot man no more constant spare shot pings and true spare shot pings oh my god it is so much better for bow guns anyway another huge mod this one's actually a little bit older is monster hunter stories made by fanderus he does a lot of mods involving monsters and their behaviors now if you've played stories you know exactly what to expect but this mod basically gives you a pet monster of your choosing exactly as you would imagine you can mount it it'll take you to your target monster it'll fight for you these monsters do not load in the arena or special arena quests unfortunately just the world maps um you know it does follow you in the guidelines though so you can grind with a pet rather than some randoms which is fucking amazing this mod does not work online at least with those who don't have this mod installed so please don't use this one if you're going to plan on going online but yeah it's pretty hype stuff everyone has wanted a pet to battle with them and so there you go now, Fandorus is also busy with a lot of stuff, so don't bombard him with monster requests for pets, please. Um, but you should definitely go check out this mod. It is so much fun. So another great tool that was added is the CC Studio by Dave Ur as well. It's an amazing program that you just need to launch while you're in-game, and it plugs itself in. Now, once you're there, you can freely change around your camera with either a free cam style for roaming and no clipping through walls. It takes some nice panoramic pictures and stuff or zoom adjustments to the base camera so you can move it up and down and zoom in and out and this one is just great for people who wanted to zoom out just a little bit more in their fights and this one also uh, persists through quests and loading screens which is great so it's just kind of like a one-time deal you can have it on the entire time you're playing no more fuss then the last one is a custom cam that is kind of attached to the character like the base cam in the game but it allows for much better freedom of movement. The only downside to this one is that you would have to readjust this thing every single time you go through a loading screen because it kind of resets the camera. But this camera mod is amazing. And I was having so much fun trying out some stupid things like first person camera mode for gunning, among some other weird stuff. And I love mods like this. It allows for infinite freedom for people who are looking to do video or clip edits with a much better degree of control compared to just base game stuff. So good job, Dave. This one is really going to be like one of my favorites. Now, the final mods I just wanted to point out are rather simple. Astros have made all the special arena quests permanent, so no more cycling for arenas. If you needed parts or whatever for speedrunning, it's just great. Now, alongside this, he also released a mod to make sure all these monsters were at their smallest HP range, which is, again, more of a speedrunner thing. But oh my god, just these two alone make the RNG grind so much better. It's just so much less of a hassle now with these mods. Now there is a custom quest mod that adds all the event quests by what appears to be a throwaway account because, well, I mean Capcom usually DMCA's these stuff for a reason, um, but if you miss some of the event quests you can always try to give this one a go and pick up the stuff you need from there. And with this theme of quest mods, Arati has published a custom quest tool on the Nexus as well, so it lets you build your own quests. It takes a bit of know-how to get the HP, stagger, defense, and attack values right, but there are some reference tools for that. It's more just to dissuade people from making some dumb quests, which unfortunately wasn't mitigated entirely. So yeah, now you can do whatever crazy hunts you wanted to do, and there's already a bunch of other custom quest mods available in the Nexus. So thank you Arati for publishing the tools to do so, and if people are looking to make their own quests, make sure to download this and give it a go. 
All right, so that's it for this video. Quickly rounding up some mods that have come out. I'll put the links in the description to make sure to thank your moderates people. And uh, thank you all for watching, and good luck out there, hunters, and whatever you may be hunting.